We can now create new band, so now we are ready to start creating new albums as well. Now remember, album is a child entity of the band. That means that we first have to have the band in place before we create an album, because album needs to belong to a specific band. So let's go to our albums controller and let's start creating the action for this. So it's going to be an HTTP post action, of course. And let's create the action and it's going to be again an action result because it will return album DTO. And let's call this action create album for band. I'm not calling it just create album because I want to be specific that this album has to belong to a band. So we need to of course pass in the album itself and that will come from the body. But since this album has to belong to a band, we need to know what band the album belongs to. So we also pass in the ID of the band. So I'm going to pass in a GUID of band ID. And like I said, from body, we will pass in the actual album. But just like we did with the band, we are going to create a special DTO object for creating an album. And that's because we don't need all the properties for creating an album as we need for outputting the album. So we'll create album for creating DTO. And I'll call it album. So now let's create this DTO. So in our models, I'm going to create new class and call it album for creating DTO. So let's have a look at the album entity first. I'm going to copy all these properties and paste them in our album for creating DTO. So as we know, we don't need any of these attributes. So I'll delete them first. Second, we don't need the ID because that's going to be created by the database itself. So let's delete that. And we want the title of the album and the description. We don't need to pass in the band object, but we do need the band ID because the album needs to belong to a band. So we need the band ID to know what band it belongs to. However, as you can see in our action, we are passing the band ID over here. So that's going to be part of the URI and therefore we don't need it in our DTO. Now we could keep it here, but we would need an additional check. We would need to check that this band ID property matches the band ID from the URI. And again, we don't really need it here since it's coming from the URI, so we can delete it. And all we need is the title and description. So let's go back to our controller. And now we can start creating our action. So first thing, we need to make sure that the band exists. So let's do an if statement and we'll check if the band doesn't exist. So we'll go to our band album repository and call the band exists method and pass in the band ID. And if the band doesn't exist, we will return not found. Just like we did with the bands, we do not need to make sure that the album is null because the API controller does that for us. So we don't need to include that check in our code. But before we do that, we of course need to map the band entity with the newly created album for creating DTO. So let's create a variable and I'll call it album entity. And we'll go to our mapper and create a map and the destination is the album entity so that's the entities dot album and the source is our album for creating DTO so with the entity being mapped we can now add it to our context so we'll go to band album repository and call the add album method and it expects two IDs the first one is the band ID so we'll pass that and the second one is the album itself, and that is our album entity. And now from the context, we can now save it in our database. So we'll go to band album repository 
and call the save method. As you can see this is pretty much the same as it was when we created the new band except for the album we have an additional ID because the album is a child entity. So with the album being in a database we now want to redirect back to our get album for band and display the newly created album. And of course because get album for band returns album DTO we need to create a new map between the entity and the album DTO for output. So that's gonna be a variable album to return and we'll create a map. So from mapper we'll create a map between the album DTO and the source is the newly created album. So that's our album entity. And we can now return it. So we'll return created a route and we want to route to our get album for band. And that means we need to use a name attribute for this action so we can refer to it. So after we pass the album ID here, we will also add a name. So our name will equal, and we can simply name it the same, get album for band. And that is where we want to route this. So we will pass get album for band to it. And when we look at this action, it expects band ID and album ID parameters. So we need to pass that into this created at route. So we'll pass in a new instance of album ID and band ID. So our band ID will simply equal the band ID that is being passed into our create album for band action. So we'll pass that in. And the album ID is the ID of the newly created album. So that will come from the album to return. Because we mapped the new album entity to the album DTO there. So album ID will equal album to return dot ID. And last we need to pass in the whole object which is the album to return. So that's the DTO of our new album. And that's our action. But remember we created a new map here between the album for creating DTO and the album entity. So we need to go to our profile for the albums and add it there. So here we will create another map and this one will be between the album for creating DTO and the album entity. So that's in the entities.album. And of course we need to bring in the namespace for this DTO which is in the models folder. Alright so next let's test this.